Welcome to the hands-on section of chapter 14 in which I show you how to use command line arguments for your program. This is the exact same code that you saw on the slides, but I'll show you that in Visual Studio this unfortunately won't work because this uses the fopen function and Visual Studio will prompt you to use the secure version of fopen instead. So I'm going to suppress, actually disable, uh, the warnings for using fopen instead of fopen secure. With this directive to the compiler. But let me show you demonstrate again what happens if I try it anyway. So fopen this function or variable may be unsafe. Consider using fopen secure instead. So if I want to suppress these warnings or disable them actually, so this is error code 4996 so I'm disabling all war all warnings related to this error 4996 try it now and it works now you see that the output that I'm getting right now is usage my copy in file out file I'm getting this because I have not provided any command line arguments to this program yet so let's change that. So the way to do this in Visual Studio, go to the Solution Explorer here on the right. This is the solution I have open right now, my copy. Right click, open properties, and in the configuration properties I have a debugging option, select debugging. And in the window pane on the right, it has an option, a field that says command arguments. So over here, I can provide my command line arguments. So this is the directory on my computer in which I have the files for this particular project, my copy. Uh, these are the compiled files, mycopy.exe, already compiled it once. So what I'm going to do is, so right now this code is running out of this directory. Uh, I'm going to pick a text file, a plain text file out of this directory. I'll just take the source file of this code, mycopy.cpp, and I'll make a copy of that. And I'll set the command line arguments accordingly. So I'm going to use my program to copy my copy.cpp and I'm going to call the copied version of it um, copied make something my copy copied dot cpp. Okay. Alright. Command line arguments are set. Now I'm going to rerun my code and let's see if we were successful. And over here now you can see in this directory there's a new file my copy underscore copy dot cpp that has just been created and I can even open this up open it with a text editor I'm going to use edit pad and there you go. It's the source code that we are compiling right now. Okay. Other than that, uh, this doesn't require any other explanation. It's exactly as advertised in the theory part. Uh, what I can do is I can show you one more thing. I'm going to set a breakpoint. Actually, this is too late. 
Uh, let me set the breakpoint over here. Run this. And let me show you the argv uh, array of strings uh, pointer and how when the value of the argc our command line argument. So uh, at this point, right at the beginning of the program, the value of argc is three. I'm going to step forward, so we step over the if condition into the else block, and into the if block inside nested inside the else block. And argv, let's see if we can open this up. Mm, yeah, not very useful, but we can see argv over here. Argv is my copy.cpp. That's the input file that I'm going to copy. So that looks all right. I'm going to step further ahead, see if we can see argv2. And there you go. At this stage, I can see argv2, and argv2 contains my copy underscore copied dot cpp. So everything is the way it should be. Yeah. Uh, okay, other than that, I don't think there's much more. So let me keep stepping through this step. We're at the while loop now, where we're going to start fetching uh, character uh, uh, character by character from the input file and copy it to the output file. So if I keep stepping, just copying data from the input file, character by character to the output file. Now this could go on for a while because we have a lot of characters in this file. So if I want to uh, jump a little bit ahead, I can now set another breakpoint over here, go back and hit F5. And that will continue running the while loop and stop when we get to the F close statement. So by this time, you can see that C, the character, the integer, into which we're reading um, characters from the input file, it contains the value minus one. Minus one is end of file, right? So the last character when we when we get out of the while loop should be end of file, should be minus one. So that is as it should be. So we close the output file. We close. We close the input file and we're out. And again, yes, my copy underscore copy dot cpp is right here. And so this is just us running this program from within Visual Studio. Now another another option is remember that every time I compile the program I produce an executable version of the program. So this executable file can be run without Visual Studio. This can be copied, sent to others, shared with others, distributed. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to let me delete this. Since this is a text file I can use, I'm going to copy that in here, right next to the mycopy.exe file. And let me open a command line window now. And let me jump into this directory that I have opened. So from the command line, cd, change directory, Go into the folder that contains the my copy compiled my copy.exe program. See, here it is, my copy.exe. And now I can run this program from the command line, my copy.exe. And I'll give the command line arguments actually from the command line, the way it is intended. 
So I'm going to create a copy of my copy.cpp, which I have right here. I just made a copy of sent it right over here. And uh, actually, let's use a different file. There's a, I, I see we have a log file over here, my copy.log. Let me make a copy of that, my copy.log. And uh, I'm going to call this my copy2.log. Okay. See in the Windows Explorer, this file just appeared, and in the command line window, directory command, and there, is, there you go. My copy.log was just created. The original file is 90 bytes in size, and so is the my copy.log file, both 90 bytes in size. I wonder what's in there. So if you're wondering too, this, these are the contents of that file, the mycopy.log file. That's what that's what was in there. And that's it. That's all about command line arguments. Command line arguments. Um, basically, if you if you use argc and argv for the arguments for your main function. Um, the arguments that you provide at the command line will be automatically tokenized for you. Sim kind of similar to what uh, the string token function does for you. But it gives you a neat count of how many arguments have been received on the command line and it separates each argument and puts them all into an array of strings that you can access via the argv character pointer. And that's all about command line arguments.